We saw the latest developments in Pakistan at the top of the news. They've got a lot of people worried. But why should you care? It's a fair question. Some Canadians have close ties with the country, as we saw in Ron Charles' story, but most have no particular link and perhaps no particular interest. But Canada does have an important stake in what's happening in Pakistan. The whole world does. Senior correspondent Brian Stewart has more on why this story matters. The mere thought of Pakistan boiling over into unpredictable chaos is close to every world diplomat's worst nightmare. It's one of the epicenters of this era's most dangerous and conflicting forces. Pakistan's got it all. Much international opinion regards it as the most dangerous nation in the world. First, it's not a wannabe nuclear power. It already has a nuclear arsenal of over 30 warheads. Quite enough to set off a massive exchange with its traditional enemy, India, also a nuclear power. The two nations have been close to war in recent years. And Pakistan has a modern military delivery system. Should this fall into extremist hands, other nuclear powers might well consider preemptive attacks. The other dangerous elements? Islamic fundamentalists of Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces are gaining strength as the government becomes daily more desperate. Add to all this maximum political instability, a climate of assassination and terror, and Pakistan's deep involvement in the war in neighboring Afghanistan. Everything is now in play. The situation is very serious. General Musharraf uh, is, uh, have imposed a state of emergency as an act of desperation. It, it is, and he has unfolded a crisis which he cannot resolve. And I think the end game has started. But the fact that no one knows where the end game will actually end up is the ultimate nightmare worry for even Canadian diplomats and generals. First of all, because Pakistan has got nuclear weapons, and it's quite conceivable that with what's happening now, the country could really fall apart, the military could fragment. And secondly, in Pakistan is where uh, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban uh, are really are based now and trained. And the worst of all possible worlds will be one in which Al-Qaeda finally gets their hands on a nuclear weapon. General Musharraf has gambled his all on being able to control the streets and clamp down on all opposition. But that's putting a lot of faith into a demoralized army. The situation is building, and in this kind of situation, when the, uh, the, when the public is out on the street, he's, uh, he will, uh, the military will be unable to control the situation. And uh, at that point, uh, I think he will become a liability to the, to the institution of the army as well. A significant danger is that Pakistan may come to resemble Iran in the late 1970s when the Shah was overthrown after his army collapsed before massive demonstrations. This put the extreme Islamic fundamentalist regime into power. In Washington, strategic analyst Michael O'Hanlon. Well, of course, we could be in a situation overnight where Pakistan becomes like Iran except with nuclear weapons, becomes the first radical Islamic state with nuclear weapons. That's possible, and it's, it's conceivable under those circumstances that such a Pakistan would not only uh, support more extreme elements in Afghanistan, not only tolerate the operations of al-Qaeda on its soil, but even pick a fight with India again and dare India to do something about it in regard to Kashmir. So you could imagine things being very bad. Also for Canada, of course, is the concern over its mission in Kandahar, Afghanistan, right next to Pakistan. The Taliban guerrillas and al-Qaeda have their main sanctuaries in Pakistan. There's fear a destabilized Pakistan could give the Taliban even more space and opportunities to mobilize for attacks against Canadian and other NATO troops. But that's unclear. Quite simply, top generals don't know which way the Taliban will be affected. And diplomats and intelligence services can't predict anything with certainty in such chaos. I think the likelihood is that it will strengthen them.
I think Musharraf's going to have a lot of things to do, and he won't be that worried about. Uh, he won't. He won't have that much time on his hands to deal with the people of the Northwest Frontier Province that are going across uh, into Afghanistan. But it could go the other way. It could be that this will really force Musharraf to come down hard on the Islamic fundamentalists. In reality, right now, there are few Pakistan scenarios you can bank on and very few even to bet on. Even if Musharraf belatedly moves to crack down on fundamentalists, it's not clear his army has the will, let alone the capacity, to act. Military analyst Anthony Cordesman. But it has not done well. Usually conventional armies score significant victories relative to insurgents when they actually do have clashes. The Pakistani army tends to lose more clashes, at least so far, than it wins. And there is the fact that Pakistan is increasingly in domestic political turmoil. There's a real question about what the army is or is not trying to achieve. So one great question for everyone is where is Pakistan going? That is the question tonight and one that's giving Canada and its allies some nervous jitters. All right, Brian Stewart joins us now in studio. You know, Cordesman and other analysts have been warning us for years about the potential problems in Pakistan. Yet, these past few weeks, the rapid deterioration of the situation there, what explains that? That's what really has got them. That's the bane of the diplomatic intelligence services, you name it. A couple weeks ago, well, three or four weeks ago in Montreal, there was a major gathering of Afghan and, Pac and Pakistan experts. They were talking positively about the possible coming together of Musharraf and the opposition forces to really finally crack down on the extremists, the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda. That was the talk then. Incredible deterioration so quickly. And that's one of the things that reminds everybody of Iran in 1979, that nightmare scenario, because we all remember how very quickly the mood in the street and the mobs and that led to an event that nobody had predicted. Well, you know, given the events of the last couple of days, they're all warning us now of, uh, of what might happen. What are they hoping? will happen. Well, certainly the military NATO and that hope, they're in an ironic position. They're appalled, of course, by the military clampdown, but at the same time, they're hoping the military can hold itself together because of that scenario I mentioned they're all worrying about. There also is in Pakistan a significant moderate middle that tends to right itself whenever the country goes into chaos. So they're hoping for that self-correcting mechanism now to start making a, a play. Maybe not for a couple of weeks, but that's what they're now pinning their hopes on. All right, Brian, thanks very much. Another excellent report.